How your early relationships impact dating and relationships. Hello and welcome to this How to Love Successfully podcast with me, Dr. Mary Kobanen. I'm a registered psychologist and a conscious dating coach. This is a podcast for for high achieving women who are looking for their committed long-term relationship. And today we'll be talking about how your early relationships impact dating and what do certain dating behaviors perhaps mean. But first of all, would you like to feel blissfully relaxed and comfortable when you go on your first date? I have created free date bliss meditation, which can help you to calm your nervous system down before you are going on a date and help you to really connect with yourself so that when you go on your date, you can connect with the more playful side of you, feel nice and relaxed and be present on your date and have the best experience when connecting with another person. But let's go now to our topic today. And this is perhaps my favorite topic, how early relationships impact our relationships and your dating experiences. Why this is important to understand, it is because we tend to gravitate towards the dynamic, towards the energy that we feel that resonates with us, that feels somehow familiar. This is a dynamic that perhaps we experienced with our parents and those early caregivers. So although, of course, we have grown up and maybe gone to other relationships which are significant too, but those early relationships are the most important because they create these emotional blueprints for our relationships. And if you didn't get the best relationship tools in your early relationships, it is absolutely possible to develop these later on. This has been highly researched area and of course there's a lot of talk even on social media these days about these different attachment styles or as I would like to call them adaptations and what they mean in your dating experiences. In the 60s and and 70s there was a lot of interest in starting to understand how our early relationships impact us. John Bowlby developed this idea of attachment, which is the bond between a mother and a child. And just for simplicity today, I will refer to mother-child relationships. But of course, there are other important caregivers. I would like to introduce four different types of attachment adaptations. And each of these have certain types of characteristics And we can have a bit of a combination, but you may recognize that maybe one type of adaptation reminds you of yourself more than others. And it is absolutely possible to develop a different type of adaptation later on. I will now describe to you how the baby and the primary caregiver relationship happened and then what is likely to happen later on in adult relationships. This will help you to understand really for yourself how you relate with other people, but also how those people who you may meet on your dating journey, they are relating to you. If you're reading literature around this topic, you may feel a little bit confused because there are various different terms being used. Researchers have unfortunately used different terms for whether they're talking about child and early caregiver relationship and adult relationships. There are four different types. First of all, we're talking about secure attachment adaptation. Then we're talking about insecure ambivalent. We're talking about insecure avoidant or dismissive. And then finally, insecure, fearful, or disorganized adaptation. None of these adaptations are better or worse than the other. Of course, some of these characteristics can make 
someone's relationships easier and for some they are more difficult. So please don't feel alarmed if you find yourself identifying with that particular attachment adaptation. Okay, so let's talk about this attachment adaptation. And if we start, first of all, with secure attachment adaptations, what this means is that the baby grows up in an environment where his or her needs are being met consistently. There's a parent or parents who attend to the child's needs and the baby's needs without too much delay. And the baby is both emotionally upregulated as well as soothed when they're needed. They're given food, water, shelter. They've changed regularly. And just on the whole, they are being really looked after by those around him or her. And what this creates then is this feeling of my needs are being met. My needs are being looked after by someone else. I can trust that there's another person here on this planet who will help me. Attachment is biological. We were biologically designed to bond with each other. And of course, babies are totally helpless. And we are, we think about we are mammals and no other mammal really takes so long for the offspring to develop. Like if you think about a baby deer, maybe they are up on their feet within minutes or perhaps even if not within minutes then within hours and they can straight away start moving. Whereas human babies only start to walk around one year and so they're about. So when a human baby is born, They are so vulnerable and this attachment bond is absolutely crucial for their survival and development. So when a baby who has had her needs being met and nurtured, when she goes and grows up to be an adult, she finds that she is able to communicate about her needs She is able to really trust that there are people out there who will look out for her. And she gravitates towards other people. And other people are a part of solving problems for her. She knows that she can turn to someone. And this, of course, applies to men too. And generally, if you think about men, for example, who have this the secure attachment adaptation. They tend to be very straightforward in their communication. They will communicate when they like you and when they want to see you. And they don't play games. They are very straightforward and say, this is who I am. This is what I would like. I like you. I would like to see you. All of this communication feels very easy and straightforward. So those are really good markers also for good relationship. If we talk about when attachment bond hasn't quite happened in a way that allows the baby to develop these really good relationship skills. When we are talking about insecure, ambivalent attachment adaptation, this is when A baby has learned that sometimes his or her needs are being met and sometimes not. Sometimes parents or the primary caregiver is there to support and upregulate and soothe. Sometimes there may be lots of other people there to, to do this caregiving. So baby grows up with this sense of, I can't trust necessarily other people. Are they going to be there? Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. My needs don't matter too much. And there's constant this seeking and having to perhaps watch the parent. And it's difficult to really trust that the other person is there. So what then happens in adulthood When someone who has grown up in an environment where 
caregiving wasn't consistent. It might have been really good times and a lot of sort of encouragement and loving times. But what was missing was consistency. Perhaps parents had to work, parents had very good reasons why they were not able to be available. Or perhaps parents were anxious themselves, that sometimes they were so wrapped up with their own life situations and that they couldn't be available to the child and offer the reassurance baby needed or child needed. So going into adulthood, it's difficult to believe is this other person going to be there? And needing a lot of reassurance. I can't trust that you are going to be here. I can't trust that you will look out for me when I need you. And this may then seem like this, what's called quite needy behavior in some ways, because one has this inner belief and felt sense of, I can't trust. This may sometimes make your relationships difficult because it is difficult for you to trust. That even if you meet someone maybe who who has more sort of secure attachment and adaptation, it's difficult for you to know what is enough because for you, it always feels like you're not getting enough. And it's really difficult for you to trust your feelings around whether someone is actually offering enough for you in a relationship. And then the third attachment adaptation is insecure, avoidant or dismissive. And unfortunately, this um, attachment adaptation sometimes gets quite a bad rap. Especially in social media, there's quite a lot of conversations that are quite really dismissive of this attachment adaptation. What's important to understand is that these are very primal reactions to closeness and distance. So someone who has more avoidant adaptation they grew up in an environment where perhaps their parents were very busy all the time perhaps parents believed that education is the most important thing perhaps their parents did not quite have the emotional tools themselves to regulate their child perhaps they got really overwhelmed with their child's big emotions um, instead of being able to soothe over time the baby learned that I can't trust other people to come and help me. I can't trust that someone will come and be with me or play with me or really spend time with me and kind of emotionally engage with me. Perhaps I had food, water and shelter, but emotionally someone was always missing. And this internal feeling then follows into adult relationships. It's difficult to, on a felt sense, on a really bodily level, to know if you are in a relationship that there is someone else there. And often what can happen is that people who have more avoidant attachment adaptation, they may want to be in a relationship, but when there is any kind of closeness developing, they quickly shut down and withdraw and perhaps disappear. And perhaps this is what then gives the really bad rap on social posts and things like that, that someone is withdrawing very quickly and disappearing. And of course, the other person is wondering what is happening here. So it is not necessarily because of deliberately trying to make you feel bad or trying to be unkind it can be of this primal reaction to relationships. Avoidant adaptation, they require very slow adapting to the presence of another person. They require in in a relationship gradual process. And anything that is too much too quickly feels overwhelming and then one may shut down or withdraw. I know this 
avoidant attachment adaptation very much myself because that is where I started from. I didn't get the emotional tools in my early caregiving because it was very much focused on kind of what I call practical parenting. And since then, I have worked so much in therapy and in various coaching and, of course, in my relationship then to create much more secure way of relating. And, of course, that can still vary at times depending on my own emotional regulation skills at the time and what's going on. What often happens is that the insecure ambivalent and the insecure avoidant, they are drawn to each other because they come from the opposite perspectives. The insecure avoidant needs a lot of space and kind of gradual progression towards closeness. And the the anxious ambivalent requires a lot of closeness and reassurance. And for some reason, these two attachment adaptations are really gravitating towards each other. I suppose they're trying to create the middle where you are communicating openly and honestly about your feelings and your needs. Then finally, we have the insecure, disorganized, fearful attachment adaptation. And this is when the parent has been abusive perhaps very critical so there are these two kind of forces within a child and then a grown-up in relationships because we've been biologically designed to bond so there is a need for connection but at the same time if the caregiver or caregivers have been abusive or or in some ways really scary then the child and the adult often flips between wanting a lot of reassurance and on the other hand, being fearful of the connection. Researchers have found that about half or so people fall into this secure attachment adaptation. On dating apps, this may be quite a lot flipped and there may be more insecure people there. Because those people who are securely attached often tend to be in relationships and only come out maybe for a brief while for whatever reason, but they tend to be in relationships. So often people say when they're dating that, oh, everyone's there just ghosting. And especially these days, perhaps some of those apps, some of those online services maybe make it really easy that people end up not communicating honestly about where they are and if they don't want to continue conversation. And some people, of course, use, for example, internet platforms really just for entertaining themselves without having a wish to even have a long-term or committed relationship. It may be that if you have been coming across a lot of people who do not want commitment, that it's not really representing the world out there necessarily, but it is more representing the the environment that you are in. And perhaps it's also something to do with the culture and the nature of apps that create this environment, relationships being more disposable but this doesn't mean in any way that there are no good men out there they are them but you have to find them and this doesn't mean that one cannot become more secure in a way of communicating in a relationship but you what you have to remember is that no one will grow and develop in their relationship if they don't want to It is important not to put your hopes on someone's potential to become this secure person if they are very much showing signs that they are not really emotionally able to be in the relationship or want to be in the relationship right now. It is your duty to look after your needs and communicate your needs openly what you want in a relationship and if the other person is not on the same page that is absolutely fine 
it is really a matter of, regardless of your attachment adaptation, to find someone who matches what you are looking for. So perhaps it is two of you who come more from this sort of anxious way of being and you give each other a lot of reassurance and that becomes then more a secure attachment adaptation over time as you understand each other and you communicate to each other. Absolutely, it can happen that someone who is more ambivalent and someone who is more avoidant can become more secure over time. But usually this means that you need to put a lot of effort into developing this relationship. And of course, all relationships need work and constant communication and understanding your emotions and regulating yourself. If there's something to take from this is that there's, of course, always hope. But if you gravitate towards people who are already demonstrating more secure, consistent communication when they are dating, if you yourself, for example, come from more avoidant or more anxious, ambivalent adaptation, then this is a good place for you to grow as long as you also put the effort into developing yourself in whether it's in therapy or in coaching. I hope that this has been useful for you and I would love if you could go and review this podcast so that more women looking for a committed long-term relationship could hear this message and hear this information about how to create a conscious relationship in the future. And if you do know someone who would benefit from this, please go and share this information with them. Share this podcast link with them and you could help them also to create better relationship. And perhaps even you could be a part of them finding that loving long-term relationship in the future please remember give yourself the love you're seeking and you will attract the love you want bye for now see you next time